Hey folks, uh, this is Mr. Bullock and here's some more multiple choice questions for the AP test. So control groups are used in experiments in order to control the effects of lurking variables such as the placebo effect. Okay, that's it right there. So control groups are so you can control the lurking variable. So it's, it's answer A, okay? Um, uh, okay, so uh, five managers and five employees are on a grievance committee. So that's ten people, you guys. A three-person subcommittee is formed by uh, a random selection from the ten committee members. So what's the probability that all three members of subcommittees are managers? Okay, so we need to figure out how many managers, uh, what's the probability that they're managers, how many man ways can we get managers, and how many ways can we do total right here? So let's get the total first, you guys. There's ten and we're choosing three. Okay, so it's ten C3, which is 120 ways. And then out of the managers, if they're all managers, it's 5C3, so there's 10 ways to be a manager, and there's 120 ways total, so 10 over 120 gives me choice A. Alrighty, <clears throat> excuse me. Which of the following is a method for proving the, uh, the accuracy of a sample using no more than three or four words in any question? Nah, that doesn't sound right. Uh, when possible, avoid using the human interviewers, relying on... Com that's not right either. Use a large sample size, a larger sample size. That one will always... Uh, improve the accuracy. So it's uh, choice C. Okay. All right. Uh, if you choose a, a, a card at random from a well shuffled deck of 52 cards, what's the probability that the card is not a heart? Well, since one fourth of them are hearts, that means three fourths of them are not hearts. So three fourths is uh, 0.75. Choice C. Okay. Uh, all right. So suppose you have a loaded dice. Uh, loaded die, which gives the outcomes 1 through 6 according to the following distribution. Okay, so notice uh, they're not all equal to each other. The probability of rolling a 1 is 0.1 and then it's 0.2 and 0.3 and so on. Okay, so if this die were rolled 6,000 times, the number of times we'd get a 2 or 3 should be about, okay, so here's the probability of getting a 2 or means addition, so I'm going to add up this probability plus this probability, so it's going to get me a probability of 0.5, so uh, 0.5 of the 6,000 rolls would get me 3,000 rolls, so choice B. Okay, all right, so here, probability of A is 0.24, the probability of B is 0.52, and the probability, uh, oh, I'm sorry, and A and B are independent, okay, what's the probability of A or B? Okay, well, remember this, you guys, since it's independent, we got to do the probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B, minus their intersection right here, okay? Before, there was no intersection. What problem was that? I forgot. Let's see. Um, right here. This was no intersection because I can't roll a 2 and a 3 at the same time. So there's no intersection. So, you know, the probability that their intersection would be 0 on that one right there. So so here's the formula right here. works for both of them, whether they, there is an intersection or not, because you'd be subtracting 0 or not, okay? So, um, uh, so what we got to do is, uh, um, uh, since uh, they're independent, then we got to figure out what's the probability of A times B, because that would be the intersection. So I'm going to go ahead and put uh, 20.24 times 0.52, and that's the probability of A times B. And then we just add them up and subtract it, and I get uh, choice C on that. Okay. All right. Which of the following pairs of events are disjoint or mutually exclusive? This this means they can't share anything. They don't have any intersections. So A the odd numbers. B, the numbers less than five. No, there's numbers that are less than five that are odd, so it's not that one. The even numbers and the numbers greater than ten. No, for it's not that one either. The number less than five and then all negative numbers. No, there's negative numbers that are less than five. Uh, the numbers above 100 and the numbers less than 200. That's it. There's no intersection with that one, so it's, it's choice D. Okay? It's not E either. It's choice D. All right, uh, a die is loaded so that the number six comes up three times as often as the others. So what's the probability of rolling a one or a six? So I've got to figure out the probability of rolling a one or a six, okay? So these, um, uh, these are disjoint or mutually exclusive. Uh, so the probability of a one or six, you just add them up. Now mutually exclusive means I can't roll a one and a six at the same time. It means there's no intersection. All right, so it's just we just got to figure out what's the probability of one, what's the probability of rolling a six, and add them together. Okay, so since uh, six is three times as likely, I listed the, the one once, the two once, the three once, the four once, the five once, and the six three times because it's three times as likely. Okay, so there's eight numbers. So the probability of rolling a one is one-eighth. The probability of rolling a, a six is three-eighths. So if a probability of rolling 
uh, a 1 or a 6 would be adding those together. So 1 uh, eighth plus 3 eighths is 4 eighths or 1 half. Sorry, you can't see that there. So it's choice C, 1 half. Alrighty. Uh, let's see. Which of the following variables is a continuous variable? A continuous variable is a non-counting. You can't count it. So I, I can count the crack number of eggs. I can count the number of people in the family. I can count uh, the brand of laundry detergent. The ones I can't count is a lifetime of the, the lifetime of a nine volt battery. Okay. So uh, recall. Um, so the ones that are not countable. So so it's uh, choice A. Okay. All right. Uh, for normal variable X having a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 5, the largest 10% of the population exceeds. All right. Well, if the largest 10%, remember our Z-score table? The Z body, the body of the Z-score table tells me my percentages. So if it's my top 10%, that means the Z table is everything to the left. Do you remember that? So look in the body, you guys, for... Um, uh, the one that's 90%, uh, the one that's closest to 90%. So look in the body and then scroll over and you'll find out your z-score is 1.28. Okay, that's not the answer, you guys. We're looking for x that gets me a z-score of 1.28. So remember the z formula, um, the x minus the mu divided by the standard deviation. Okay, so we have all that information up here, you guys. So the z now is 1.28 and we're looking for the x and the mean is 100 and standard deviation is 5. Now it's just number crunching, you guys. So you cross multiply and solve and you get choice D. All right, there'll be some more after this one too. Take care, you guys. I hope your study's going well.